You might notice some light blue spheres circling your character's head and maybe some other parts of the body, but mainly the head. These are going to be the deform controls that are mainly found on rigs as a circle, um, splitting the face into four rings normally. We find this very convoluted and not necessary. So we've gone ahead and simplifying, we've gone ahead and simplified the bend controls down to three. So we have the middle head, which just allows us to kind of just push the shaping of the face. We have our top and bottom head, which enact the, as well, you can shape the angle of the face. So if you wanted to pull these ones to the screen right and pull the center face screen left, you'll get a really big, you know, deformed squash shape in the head. So it just adds for some play. You can also, of course, you know, squash the face up and down. And we believe they're really, really fun controls to help animate the face. On some rigs, you will notice that parts of the controls do not stay with the squash deformers. Don't freak out. This was a decision that drastically improves the frame rate and speed of each rig. And we don't believe that any animator will be stretching this to an absurd amount that you really disconnect from the hair. So for this example, you're most likely not gonna be pulling the head too much further than something like this. And we believe that realistically that's close enough to while you're deforming the head, still have an accurate representation of what these controls do. So speed and performance were one of our biggest key focuses throughout building all of these rigs. I will mention again that if you are using at least not state of the art, but newer hardware and software, all of these rigs should run at 24 frames per second, if not faster, not that you need it to be faster. Um, again, if you have older hardware, you might need to turn off some of the fancier features or higher mesh to keep it at that frame rate. But you know, this is long story short why some of the controllers with the deform do not stay perfectly pinned. You can also see just like the other stretch controls, we do have that volume compensation. So if we like that we're losing some volume in the head to feel taffy-like, we can turn that on. Or if we wanna keep it very consistent to this is a skull and we don't want any uh, volume loss, we can go ahead and keep that volume compensation on. And you'll notice now it's basically just elongating the face. There's no volume loss, there's no taffy-like feeling. Of course, this can be found on the bottom control as well. So there's our volume compensation. So if we go ahead and pull out the jaw and you can notice the difference in that volume. We also have one more attribute on the bottom, the lower head deform, and that's going to be effects nose. This is super handy because again, we layered in a lot of either automated functions or manually driven abilities. So it's up to you as the animator to decide how much of a crutch you want from the rig or how much you want to go in there as yourself and animate every last bit of it. So again, what I mean by this is if we are pulling the jaw around here, you can see that there's some fun play, it gets squished up. But if we don't want that, we can go ahead and turn off effects nose. And now as we pull around, you'll notice that the nose itself is not being affected. If we wanted to do, of course, those same kind of functions by ourselves, we would have to do some translations and rotations and, and tugging and pulling on everything. So you can see where that is a lot of work, where the effects nose does so much of that for you. And of course, I would not recommend ever turning it to one, because like we said, a one-to-one -one relationship between things just feels very robotic and uh, not very organic. So I would tone this down again to something in the 0.3 to 0.5 range to get the nice feeling of connectivity, but not a one-to-one -one relationship. Last is going to be the middle head. You will notice there's some special attributes on this one that the other controls did not have. And that's going to be left and right face skew. So instead of constantly needing this to drag around to kind of get the shape that you want, if your character is looking left or right and you want to open the side of the face up, sorry about that, 
Let's go ahead and move those over. And we want to open the face up to the screen right here. We can very easily grab face skew. We want, oops, sorry, yeah, we want right face skew because technically that should be left, but it's screen right. So it just helps you while looking at it. And you can see we can tighten up the left side of the face and open up the right side of the face. And in doing so, we are allowing that to open up with a much less controls of having to go in and do that with the eye socket or eye brows, allowing for everything to just be cleanly separated. You can next notice that we also have a mid face squash. So it will basically take that whole entire center box of the face area and squash and stretch it as you see fit. So super handy to just squash in if you're doing a blink or a, a face take, it's really nice to have. And then of course we have one that will do the overall of the face. So we're getting everything included. And it's really nice that we've broken this up for you as the animator to dis decide what is best for you and your scene. So that's all we have for the deforms on the head. And I'm gonna actually just go ahead and turn back on the body here. And turn back on all these controls. And you'll see that we have in a lighter variant of the color on that arm. So I guess we don't need clothing for this demo. You'll see that the right hand side of the body is all red and the left hand side of the body is all blue. So to help differentiate, especially when your arm is in FK, you'll notice that they are very close together in location and size. So to help you as the animator understand the difference, we went ahead and made them a lighter color. So you know when you're grabbing a deform or bend bow control. This allows you, of course, to get subtle shaping into the arm as you need. We also can rinse and repeat that same knowledge here. So if we wanted to create some nice bending shapes, we can go ahead and just pull those out 